You're watching KHQA Overtime with Chris Dewar. Brought to you by Con Communications. And welcome back to Overtime, everybody, where we do indeed love the power of Twitter. According to the Gems Twitter site, that game has now gone final. After that lengthy lightning delay, the Gems are winners tonight. They knock off Danville by the final count of 9-6. to six. Well, in my world, this day is the rough equivalent, I should say that again, equivalent of December the 26th. The day after the do or die bowl is complete and we have to wait another year for the return of the Tri-State's only all-inclusive high school football all-star game. Now with the help of some great coaches, some unbelievable sponsors, the tremendous staff here at KHQA, and of course some 90 great young men who love the sport, we tend to put on a really good pigskin party every June. But I'm a little concerned that we may never be able to top the product that we lucked into hosting last night at Flynn Stadium. To quote my friend Brad Trinago from Regional Radio Crest, who was broadcasting the game last night, June football isn't supposed to be this good. See for yourself right now. It's so big because, you know, for some of these kids, it's the last time we're going to get to play high school football. And some of us are lucky, myself included, that we get to go to the next level. I mean, this, this is a huge win. And this is something we're going to remember the rest of our lives. The dirty little secret about All-Star Games is that they're supposed to be more about recognition than competition. Apparently, the 90 senior All-Stars taking part in Do or Die Bowl 8 weren't given that memo. Uh, all week, the, the quotes and the goal was to come win this game. It was clear by our coaches. It was clear by the players. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt about it. Um, we came in the week. We said we were going to have fun, but we knew we were going to get that win one way or another. And that resolve, which was nearly of state championship level from both squads, was impossible to miss. And it was best exemplified by a pair of defenses intent on imposing their will, as the first 12 minutes and change of this game proved the ultimate whitewash. An impressive feat, considering all the All-State running backs, quarterbacks, and receivers who were on the turf. We play against each other in the season, it's kind of competitive, but playing with these guys, working together all the time, this week of practice has been pretty fun with these guys. Some of these kids like Will Mefford, Shoemaker, and Hamilton and all them guys, it's fun playing with them, but man, it's hard work preparing to play against them, but it's real fun playing with them on the same field. Against that withering defensive pressure, it would be the E squad that would mount the first serious threat, thanks to the creativity of quarterback Matt Gunterman and a great sliding catch by Brown County's Justin Volk. But the East would come away empty on this drive after Nathan Knuffman missed a 49-yard field goal. The West offense then would awake to open the second quarter. A Kevin Jennings slant pass lit the fire, but it was a little play-calling chicanery that would set the table. Seth Williams takes the snap from the pistol, drops it out. There is a lateral out on the right side. Hurley downfield. It is caught down at the 12-yard line by Matt Loader. First and 10, they'll mark him down at the 16. The West would follow suit with yet another trick call, this time the Seth Williams shovel pass to Jacob Lanier, which would set the table for the first score of the ball game, courtesy of Monroe City running back Shane Williams, who would break the goose eggs on the board from two yards out. That established the West may have caught a considerable break on this drive as one play prior to that touchdown, East defensive end D'Angelo Dean appears to have cleanly stripped the ball away from quarterback Seth Williams, who was saved here by a quick whistle. But the touchdown would stand, the PAT would fail, and the West had itself a 6 to nothing lead. And then Will Mefford, Dalton McCarty, and the rest of the West defense went back to work to preserve their first half shutout. It's nice to have speed on the field covering the receivers. Illinois kids pretty fast. I love playing with these guys and I'd do it every weekend if I could. That 6-0 halftime deficit would balloon again on the East just minutes into the second half. And once again, it would be Shane Williams who would prove the root cause. A lot of people on the line of scrimmage for the Easter. Here they come, a screen set up underneath, caught by Williams at the 40. To the 35, to the 30, needs a block, breaks into the clear at the 20. 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Great call. Touchdown, Shane Williams. Well, on my, my line did everything. Um, I caught the ball and all there was was white jerseys in front of me making great blocks and uh, I just fit my way in, made, I had a good block from a receiver and that's what made the play. What could have been the death knoll for the East squad, now down 12 to nothing, proved, however, to be a wake-up call. As quarterback Matt Gunnerman made a huge third down completion to Justin Volk on the ensuing possession, and the East changed its offensive tact accordingly. Yeah, we went to the locker room and noticed we needed to hit the short routes a little bit to get them burnt deep, and that's, that's what we did. As a pair of WIVC rivals working together, 
would reverse the polarity of this entire football game. Oh, it felt great. It was a good feeling to play with Matt. He's one heck of a quarterback, and he, he was just telling me what to do out there. He, he helped me out. Matt came into the huddle, and he said, hitch and go, so I did it, and then I saw the ball up in the air, and I just said, don't drop it, don't drop it. Jansen Yale most certainly did not. His 23-yard touchdown reception and the ensuing extra point would cut the East deficit down to 12-7, and the defense would bow its neck from there. This sack from Clayton Taylor forced a West three and out. Then Matt Gunterman's Tim Tebow act would continue on the next drive as he authored a wonderful possession that included this key fourth down conversion and then a little more P. Hill Triopia magic. In camp alongside Gunterman in the pistol, three receivers to the near side. Gunterman is back to throw, puts the ball Got up it. into the end zone for Yale. It is touchdown! Got it over Logan Hicks, and the East is into the lead with 9.20 remaining in the football game. But you had to know it wasn't going to end just that easily. Not with Clopton Ellsbury quarterback Scott Kreger given a chance to channel, well, Scott Kreger. 80 yards from potential victory, the Indian Hawk All-State quarterback went to work. I, honestly, when I heard he was the quarterback, I thought, well, hey, I've been running option my whole life. I'm excited to get to run some spread, and I'm glad this guy's throwing the football. And just the way he saw the field, the way he can move and run and get out of the situations that he was put in, great quarterback, and he led this team. And Scott's magic march led to a moment of zen for Bowling Green's finest. Here's Brad Trinago with the go-ahead score. Here we go, first down, Krager inside, yes. And a nice hole for the Bowling Green running back, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, West. All of a sudden you're down 14 to 12. Do you have any doubt you could come back and get this one? Not a doubt in mind with these guys all week. Um, not a doubt at all that, that we could come out and finish the job, and we did. And just the look on our face, and we got stuff done. But while they were now back on top at 20 to 14, the West squad left two minutes and 30 seconds of agonizing time on the clock for Matt Gunnerman in the East to counterpunch. And he certainly marshaled his team across midfield and eventually beyond the West 30 yard line when a Tyler Shoemaker sack with 15 seconds left stymied the momentum, which just left seven ticks on the clock and one last shot at glory for the East. It was everything I thought it would be. It was fantastic to win. It was a fantastic crew I was playing with. Uh, it was just a real blessing to be on this team. If any chance we can get to beat up on the Illinois boys, we like to. But they're good kids, great game, real fun week, good people on both sides. And I tell you, what, it was real fun. I give all the props to the East squad, too. Uh, they were great, fun game. It was all the way down to the wire. I enjoyed it so much. Oh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun coming out here. Um, I thank everybody at the KHQA for getting me out here, and um, it was just fun. A great team, great players. Uh, it was just unbelievable. Well, not just a great game, some really classy gentlemen, as you saw right there. It was a fun week from practice. I know it was a little hot out there, but these kids had such great attitudes. We had an absolute blast. Which brings us now to our fifth and final Con Communications Connection nominee for June. By now, my friends, you well know the drill. Our job every week is to submit spectacular highlight combinations for your perusal. Your job at the end of every month is to go to connecttristates.com and simply vote for your favorite. And as an incentive to ensure that you do vote, if you vote, you become eligible to win a great prize package from Con Communications. And who are we looking at this week? We go back to the do or die bowl and that touchdown which pushed the West up 12 to nothing. Just a great bit of running right here from Shane Williams who can flat motor. Again, Shane Williams came into this game maybe wondering how many touches he was going to get at running back in a spread offense. Boy, he made the biggest catch of the game to that point, maybe the, the difference maker in this ball game, as Williams went 44 yards, split two defenders right here, and saw his way fit into the end zone. Great night for Shane Williams, who not only had those two touchdowns, but a great run on that Statue of Liberty play after the third and decisive touchdown to give his team a two-point conversion. Shane Williams, your final nominee of the month. Do you like this best? Let's go back and peruse the last couple that we've had to give you some idea, some really good nominees this month. It started off with Megan Boone's game-winning walk-off home run for the Payson Seymour Lady Indians in the state semifinals. We also had that great uh, halfback option pass from Nick Wyman to Jordan Chapel over at Mizzou Camp. 
also on the docket for you to vote on this month. We've got the D'Angelo Dean, Matt Deusterhouse slam dunk from the Quincy Herald Wig McDonald's All-Star Classic and Matt Briggs from Burlington, Iowa with a beautiful chip in to save par on hole number 22 in the Pepsi Titan Little People's Classic. So lots of choices to make. I believe the votes go up tomorrow online. Go to connecttristates.com and make your vote. And when we come back, one of Hannibal's finest tries to break through and stay undefeated in the MMA ranks. We'll update you on Mark Dickman's progress coming up next. Well, we've got news now on Mark Dickman, the Hannibal product, fighting tonight in the Resurrection Federation uh, event number three tonight. Dickman came into the night at 5-0, and taking on similarly unbeaten Jordan Rinaldi in Kearney, Nebraska. Just got word from my friends down there, including Mr. Tyler Perry, not the Medea one, the really cool one who's from Hannibal, who's a great MMA fighter in his own right, tells us that Mr. Dickman lost his first match tonight. Uh, all three judges had it unanimously scored 29-28. Everybody I know who saw the fight so far tells me they're not quite sure that Dickman did, in fact, lose the fight. So Mark is now 5-1 and one officially. Unfortunate break on the night, but Mark's still a very promising and aspiring uh, fighter in the Resurrection Federation ranks. We'll keep you updated on his progress and on Mr. Perry's progress, who I think is fighting next in Las Vegas so, or Hawaii or someplace like that. So pretty good uh, far-flung distance for him. And we'll have more overtime for you coming up after this. All right, with your indulgence, some thank yous tonight at the end of this week that was both exhausting and exhilarating. Love the Do or Die Bowl. It is my absolute favorite week of the year, right up there with the first week of high school football, obviously. But it's so much fun to be able to have this stage and to be able to give these young people, some of whom will never, ever play the game again, a chance that I think most of us who've played the game would like to have. One last chance to strap on the chin strap. So, again, Huge thanks to my employers here at KHQA, and in particular, our general manager, Mara Klingingsmith, for helping make this possible, as well as to the great people at Refreshment Services Pepsi, who have been with us since the start, whose patronage has just been unbelievable. We had great sponsors this year. We had great teams. We had unbelievably great coaches in Bill Reed, who coached his last game last night, moving on to Athens to become a principal, and Tony DeGrave, who I think probably was just having a blast. He was all smiles the entire week. So. Thank you to those folks. Thank you to all the fine people at Quincy High School, including my man Jim McNeil, who got that stadium looking so good. That guy works harder than anybody I know. I work pretty hard. He puts me to shame. So thanks to Jim. Thanks to the Quincy Booster Club. Thanks to Bill Sanders. Thanks to everybody involved who helped make this game such a huge success. But especially thanks to those kids who sweated it out all week and gave us their all last night. It was absolute theater to watch, and it was fun. And thanks again to all the fans. I know we had a heat wave. One of these years, one of these years, we're going to get perfect weather. But thanks for coming out. They turned out in droves last night to watch some great football and support great kids, and that's what it's all about. Hey, overtime goes away. We'll be back in six weeks to start talking high school football. I'm going away for a couple of weeks. It's July. I hibernate. We'll be back. We'll be fired up. We'll be ready to do it again. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you down the road.